you know how we do sometimes. <laughs> we want somebody else to pray us through instead of us praying ourselves through. You, you have power you don't, just don't know of. But anyway, what she did, <laughs> after I told her of what I was feeling, she looked at me and said, Paulette, Sister Paulette, God wants to talk to you. And she left it at that. That's all she said. God wants to talk to you. I said, uh-huh. All right. She didn't have any more to tell me. Those were the best words. I haven't forgotten them yet, and I never will, because they were so powerful, telling me that God wants to speak with you. He wants to talk to you. He's waiting. He's listening. He's ready. He has whatever it is you stand in need of. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So faith is so crucial. And we build it up by building ourselves in the word of God. And today we are so blessed. We can hear it from so many different sources, from the Internet, from the TV, TVN, or Daystar. That, there's so many sources, radio stations that have legitimate pastors that speak the word. There's really no reason for us not to be indoctrinated in the word of God. No reason. No reason. All you have to do is grab hold of it. Grab a hold of it. And let it just permeate your mind, your heart, the seat of your affections. When I say heart, let it permeate and build you up. You don't know how powerful you are. You don't know how powerful you are. Now, one thing about us, I think it's coming back to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why did I say that? Now it's gone again. All right. Next time I'll just say what it is. <laughs> The other scripture I wanted to deal with, Romans 4, 17, well, verses 17 through 22. We have so many examples in scripture whose lives that we can look at and learn from them, learn from their walk with God. Learn from the mistakes they made because they were human and they made some doozies. They, they did. But learn from them. Now this is our father Abraham. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, not are, were, who against, who against hope believed in hope. I like that part. Seemingly hopeless. But he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was, which was spoken. 
so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, he was not physically dead, but he was dead in other ways. He was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, his wife's womb, because she was in the 90s. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. But he, he believed God. He believed God. He didn't always. <laughs> there was a period where there was some doubting going on in Abraham because we know theirs was the situation where Sarah did something that just amazes me, amazes me. Husband, go in into my handmaid. Go in into this other woman. It may be that I will have children through her. He didn't argue about it. So see, his faith wasn't always up, 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 up there. He grew in it just as we are to grow in it. He grew in that faith. And at this point in his life, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that whatever he had promised, God was able to fulfill. Your faith will increase through your hearing of the word of God. Whether it's your reading it, studying it, whether it is our beloved pastor speaking the truth of the word of God, not in a spirit of condemnation, but that was not the example of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I came not to condemn. You are already in that state. I, I, I didn't come to condemn you. I came that the world through me might be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There was a question I was going to ask. I did mean to ask it earlier, but I'll ask it now. You don't have to raise your hand or respond to it. My question is, how many of you pray? Just pray. How many of you pray? The scripture that, I don't think I read this, but I wanted to share it with you. Romans 8, 26 through 27. Now remember I said we pray in our known language and then we also pray in the unknown language of the Holy Ghost operating through us relative to that which is unknown 
Romans 8, 26 through 27 declares this. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are times in your life where you're going to need that spirit intervening on your behalf. And it needs to come from you, from your own mouth, to God, to God. Because the spirit that is inside of you knows the struggles that you are dealing with, with your earthly body and with the adversary's help. And it's that spirit that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit of God, because they're in, they're in total communication. The three that are in communication, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit of God. They're, they're in total communication He knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He is the one that knows how to commune with God on your behalf like you can't do in your regular English or regular language, whatever it may be. Saints, God loves us more than we can imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. He loves us more than we can imagine. We, we can't comprehend his love. We, we can't do it. We can't do it. It's so vast. It's so... <laughs> There's no limit to it. No limit to it. No limit to it. Now, see, one thing we've got to realize, in Jesus Christ was the fullness of God in the body. God has bestowed upon us measures <laughs> Measures, measures of faith, measures of grace, measures. That means just in part. Jesus had it all. He had it all. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But we in part. But I was listening to someone even this week who had said, that's why when the body of Christ comes together as a corporate body and then put that part that you have and that part that you have and that part that I have and, oh, hallelujah, 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 oh, glory to your name. When we put it together... We are something to be reckoned with. We are a force to be reckoned with. That's why unity is so crucial. Us being united in the faith is crucial. Powerful. Powerful. So powerful. And I'll let this be my last scripture. Psalm 119, 89, which I love, which simply states, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's a done deal. 
It's a done deal. It's not going to change. It's settled. It's, uh, his word is settled. Hey, that's just it. That's just it. That's why you can depend on it. You can rest in it. You can just, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just let it flow through your being. Let it flow through your being. Students, God is able to keep you. He is able to keep you in the classroom. And we know, we, we know what's happening. Well, we don't know. We hear about it after the fact to our schools that are being rampaged. Hey, children, children, children destroying other children. Oh, God. Saints, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. I believe I'm going to turn it back into the hands of our most capable pastor.